Hello and welcome to HDMI's podcast. Today we have the honor of talking with Dr. John Burgess, academic advisor to HDMI. And we're going to be speaking about a very interesting yet very important topic on quality service. Hi, John. Hello, Anthony. Welcome That's back to HTMI. Thank you very much. Lovely to have you. Thanks. John, with your many years of experience, in your opinion, what do you think is the importance of quality service within the hospitality industry today? Anthony, it's absolutely central. It's paramount, and I think it's a neglected an underdeveloped area of competitive advantage. Uh, certain organisations are getting their act together and have conquered it and are delivering it. If you think of Ritz-Carlton, if you think of Disney, and if you think of a number of other organisations, they have mastered it and have it as part of their culture. The staff have, have absorbed it and deliver it consistently and, and, and across the piece. But so many of our organisations, I regret to say, maybe because of pressure of operations, maybe because of the current economic climate, or maybe just sheer volume of, of, of work, are not actually paying attention to good quality service. So, in your opinion, where do you think that culture, the basic culture within a person, starts? Would it start, for example, um, studying in a hotel management school as part of the education? How, do, how does a person develop this understanding of quality guest service? Yeah, I think it clearly starts uh, here in a hotel school such as this, where students are really taken through the whole, the whole nature mm -hmm. of what service is in a hospitality organisation. Uh, I, I'm talking here about a, a serviced hospitality organisation. Let's just clarify that there are many hotels that are now developing minimal service letting activities. For instance, I was in Australia just, just, just last year and I rented out, uh, you'd call them over here apartments, over there they're called units, and you can uh, rent them for a period of a week or even a day or a couple of days. And I think in those situations you're very much a tenant towards a landlord mm -hmm. as opposed to a guest receiving service. So I'm actually talking about the, the, the traditional hospitality organisation. And here students have to realise that, that that's at the very heart of, of what's really important now. In allied industries, for example in retail, service is, is, is developed to a fine art. Uh, you know my wife, she likes to go fashion shopping. Uh, she often takes me to a, to a shop in uh, very close to where we live, uh, where it's quite exclusive fashion shopping. I know as soon as I enter that shop, I'm going to be asked, do I want coffee, a tea, a glass of water? I'm sat at a comfortable chair, and I'm given glossy magazines to read. My wife looks at the dresses and the fashions. That's at a retail edge. In hospitality, I think we've got to go one step further. And I think really we've got to attune to the, the real needs of guests who are checking in, who may have be tired after journey, they may have high profile meetings coming up, conferences, events or whatever. And, and being able to anticipate and to excel and to, to use an old fashioned word, wow, the customer is absolutely central. As I've said earlier, this is, I believe, a competitive edge which will be developed. As more and more, and more top brand hotels become very much the same, um, the, the competitive edge will be on the quality of service and how that's delivered. I mean, it's, it's, in, it's interesting what you were saying because if you look at the hotel industry today, you know, we are coming out of a global financial crisis. Mm -hmm. And over two years, the pressure on hotels to generate revenue, keep their guests has been really, really great. Mm -hmm. We're also living in times of increased competition, more and more hotels. Today, a lot of the hotel chains are developing more and more brands and sort of defining different levels of service for each of those brands. Correct, yeah. So would you say that in today's times and in the future with increased competition, 
sometimes with too many hotels. There's a more pressure on hotel management to really go all out and provide sometimes, I don't know if you want to call it exclusive or better service than what the competition is doing to maintain the existing customer base, but also win new customers to their hotel operation. I think you're right to talk about the competitive pressures. And I think that, that there is always a squeeze on the front, uh, the front line members of staff, whether they happen to be the concierge, whether they happen to be reception, whether food and beverage or wherever. Um, clearly, teams have to work within the standard for the organisation. And I'm not, I'm not urging every organisation to adopt five-star standards. But managers have to realise that they, they need to have an advantage uh, and they need to, in fact, support staff to attain the level of service that they want and then give them the confidence and the space to be able to act naturally in terms of giving that service with extra panache, style, enthusiasm to go that one step further. Because I think this is where customers will have a memory of some excellent service. Right. Now, let me tell you, I, it's one of the best check-ins I experienced was, was just down here in Lucerne, uh, which was superb a couple of years back when, we, when I stayed at the Grand National Hotel prior to graduation. And there, the, the quality of greeting, the fact that we were taken to one side, offered a glass of, of, of sparkling wine, and generally talk through the hotel, its facilities, and made to feel welcome in a very relaxed way, uh, was, was at the pinnacle of that sort of five-star quality of service. Clearly not every organisation wants to do that, has the time or the staffing to do it, but I think if that's the standard, people ought to be trained and developed and coached to be able to deliver that. On the contrary, I, I stayed in that same town just a couple of nights ago, and I had a horrendous experience. Let me tell you about not it. At, not at the same hotel? Not at the same hotel, and I won't disclose the hotel. But I checked in, it was about 20 to 1 at night, and I noticed the keys displayed on the back indicated the occupancy was low, 10 or 15%. And I commented this to the to the guy behind the counter and he said, yeah, it's the winter season. Um, and he very kindly gave me the smallest and the noisiest hotel, uh, room in the hotel. I thought, well, couldn't he give me a room with a bit more space that I didn't, could take my jacket off inside the room. <sighs> However, uh, I also noticed that there was a, a very welcome uh, tea-making facility there. But when I tried to plug it in, I had to physically move the furniture to be able to get the electricity into the kettle and so on. And when I was checked out the next day, I might as well have been checked out by a machine. Perhaps he was a machine, a German-speaking machine, uh, because he wasn't interested in me. His only question was, did I want the bill folding in an envelope? And I said, no, I don't. I'm not going to post it anywhere, but no, I didn't. <laughs> and, and I feel you know, we have to be sensitive I think, I think the message for me is to not make a sale, but make a guest. Right. Why not give me a good room when I check in? Because 85% of the rest of the hotel was free. Why not say, rather than a noisy room on the street, I'll give you a, a room at the back? And why not think about, if we're going to have tea-making facilities, is there an easy socket that we can right. plug in and so on? And if we want to check guests out without talking to them, let me have a machine in the wall. Because when I buy tickets for a, <laughs> for a train, at least it says, thank you for using this service and have a good journey, <laughs> which is not what the checking out reception is saying. So I hope that clarifies the point yeah, I'm definitely. making. I mean, it's, it's interesting, the example you use with the Grand Hotel National, uh, because recently in one of my marketing classes, um, one of the the new gurus of marketing, a gentleman known as Seth Godin. You know, according to him, he says that today the strongest and most powerful form of marketing is word of mouth marketing. Yes. And using you know, the perfect example you've just given um, of this exceptional service that you did not expect in a hotel, whether it's a three, four or five star, you're probably going to tell as many people 
On the other hand, you know, if people come to you and say, John, could you recommend a hotel in Luzon? You're probably going to say, well, whatever you do, don't go stay in this particular hotel because that's not, you're going to get this bad service. It's even, it's even more powerful than that now, Anthony, because I'm a great believer in TripAdvisor. I always look at TripAdvisor before I make a selection. I add to it. I also add my comments to the booking agency that I use. Right. So I constant, I'm in fact telling a global market about my experience, whether it's positive, and I've had some superb positive experiences, where I've been wowed by the exceptional uh, efforts of, of mm -hmm. some of the staff there and by some woeful experiences that I've, I've just indicated. Well, it's been fascinating talking to you as usual. And thank you very much for the, your very interesting comments and very interesting input. Thank you very much for joining us today um, for HDMI's podcast. Um, I hope uh, you have a better understanding, especially from an expert like Dr. Burgess, on the meaning of quality guest service.